Great setting? Check. Great characters? Check. Great stories? Check. But Magic players know for a truly great set, you need truly great mechanics too. Does Kaladesh deliver? Check, check, and check. Check it out. So one of my goals was, I wanted to have a higher variance of play, meaning if you took the exact same deck and played many matches with it, that the games would play out differently, more so than the average game of Magic. And the key to doing that has to do with synergy. It has to do with making mechanics that allow you to make choices where you shift in different directions over different games. Um, and we managed to find a couple mechanics that did exactly that. So Kaladesh is a world of wondrous inventions, and a lot of the artifacts on Kaladesh are powered by a new resource called energy. Now in Kaladesh the card set, you're going to see lots of cards that give you energy counters. Energy is completely interchangeable. One card can give you energy counters, and then you can spend those counters on the ability of a different card. Remember, the counters go on you. They're not attached to the card that gave you the energy. They don't sit in some weird zone. They're just counters that are on you, the player. Okay, so our story begins back in Mirrodin, original Mirrodin. So I was working with artifacts, and I, I was trying to figure out a way to sort of how, what are artifacts? They run off something. And so I was trying to play around with mechanics that dealt with what was the energy that ran the artifacts. And it was inspired by the idea of cards like serrated arrows, where you only had so many uses of them. So I said, well, what if you had cards like that, but you know, let's say you had serrated arrows and then other card like serrated arrows. What if instead of serrated arrows, you could only use it three times, and this other card, you can only use it three times. What if between them, you could use it six? That was the inspiration for energy. Having energy in Kaladesh opens up a lot of really interesting design space. For example, there might be some activated ability you want to put on a creature that doesn't cost mana, but it has to cost something. Uh, sometimes we do it with life, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't go on cards of all colors. Energy is something we can give you a activated ability on a creature without mana, you can use repeatedly, but not indefinitely. So you get the, you have this finite resource that you can use to give creatures extra abilities. So the really cool thing about energy is you can get energy from a lot of different cards and spend it however you choose. So a challenge in developing energy was making sure there wasn't one card you always wanted to shift all your energy into. If you play three cards out and you're only ever using one of them and that happens game after game after game, clearly the energy economy is messed up a little bit. We put a lot of time into making sure that no matter how you played your energy cards, you would find opportunities to use each of their abilities in different instances. One of the challenges with uh, developing energy, especially for constructed play, is uh, energy cards play really well with each other, um, but there are no other energy cards anywhere else in Standard, for example, or throughout Magic's history. So we wanted to avoid a situation where energy cards only played well with each other and sort of forced you to build this all-energy deck and not to mix in any other cards from the surrounding sets. Um, so what we tried to do was aim little packages of energy cards, maybe three or four energy cards you might play in three or four copies, and they work together and you can interchange the energy between them to make them a little bit more versatile, but it wasn't as if you had to play all energy cards just to power up this one energy outlet. So a good example of an energy package that I like to think of is a package of Harnessed Lightning, Voltaic Brawler, Lathnian Hellion, and Bristling Hydra. And these four cards together form sort of a core package that you might turn into, say, a red-green energy beatdown deck, for example. So one of the neat things about energy that really plays in the larger theme of the set, let's take Minister of Inquiries. It's a card that with energy you can mill your opponent. So sometimes you get that card and the strategy is in this game, I have a slow game or, you know, I'm going to mill my opponent up. That's what I'm doing. And so I'm taking my energy and that's my energy game focus this game. But lots of other games, maybe that's not what you're doing. In fact, the minister gives you energy and you use it for a different purpose. Like one of the neat things about energy is really how you use it from game to game can radically change. And so even though you have the same cards, the strategy from game to game can be radically different. We look at what are some etherpunk or steampunk style tropes, and you can't really talk about that without talking about vehicles. You know, we want airships racing through the skies. We want interesting wheeled vehicles or walkers, you know, going through the streets. And we knew pretty quickly that this, this was the place to deploy vehicles. If energy is the cake of Kaladesh, vehicles are the icing. We have known for a long time there is a great deal of exciting space in designing vehicles and we think that our fans are going to really enjoy what we've come up with here. So Kaladesh introduces an exciting new type of artifact called vehicles. Vehicles start out as just artifacts, but you'll notice they each have a power and toughness. 
That's because it has an ability called Crew that lets it become an artifact creature until the end of the turn. Now to crew a vehicle, find the crew number, and then you need to tap creatures you control with total power equal to or greater than that number. So one of the, the really interesting things about vehicles in general is there are so many knobs and so many things we played around with. Like, it's very funny, like, energy started, and we knew what energy did, and there's a lot of balancing the energy and figuring how to use energy, but what energy was when we started design and finished design, almost identical. But vehicles just went through radical changes because we were constantly trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. We knew creatures were tied to it, we knew there was some crewing involved, but what exactly, when they became creatures, when they stopped becoming creatures, how you activated them, you know, all that, just iteration by iteration, to trying to figure that out. Once you get your creatures in there, a lot of them are offering huge amounts of power, even at very low rarities, that you're getting things that are just gonna be bigger than your biggest creature on the board, because. Elves all got in the train, and the train can smash really hard. Sky Sovereign, console flagship. We knew in the very, very early stages we wanted a great, great airship. Of course, we're on Kaladesh, it's this Aetherpunk world. There are airships around, so we made an awesome one, a big legendary airship you could play with. Kaladesh was my first design team, and I'm incredibly proud of what we've done. I think that we will see some of our work, especially on vehicles, last throughout the remaining history of the game. So Fabricate is a cool new ability you'll find on some creature cards in Kaladesh. There's a number after Fabricate, and when a creature with Fabricate enters the battlefield, you have a choice. You can either put that many plus one plus one counters on the creature, or you can create that many one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. Something we're a big fan of in R&D is creating divergent gameplay where you do something, and depending on the situation, you'll do it differently. And Fabricate is a great example of this, where you might have the same limited deck, but over the course of three matches, you might choose different modes depending on what the situation is. And you never know what you're gonna choose when you draw the card. It's at that specific moment when you play it, you have to figure out, what do I want here? Let's take the three mechanics from the set. Uh, imagine they were siblings. Okay, so we got energy, we got vehicles, and we have Fabricate. I think like Fabricate is like, it's gotta watch its, its, its older siblings that kinda get all the limelight. You know, like energy has a brand new mana symbol and just does things we've never done before. And vehicle is like, finally, after years of people asking, we finally delivered. And poor little Fabricate is like, you know, like it's the workhorse mechanic, you know, making, tying things together and doing a lot of really good work, but like just watching its older siblings get all the attention. And so I just wanna say like, poor little Fabricate, like one of the things that I love about the set is like Fabricate, which is like, in my mind, like the least splashy mechanic it's a great mechanic. Like, like it is a really cool, fun, flavorful, like inventive, like it is a neat, cool mechanic. And that is like the least splashy mechanic. We really want players through Kaladesh to feel like inventors themselves. That was a real driving question at the end of every playtest. We'd ask people, do you feel like an inventor? Did you feel like you had the opportunity to build something unique. So one of the things, we're talking a lot about mechanics. We're talking all about, you know, what energy is and what vehicles are and what Fabricate is. There's another thing we did, which is make awesome artifacts. Like one of the things that I gave to my team, I said, we want to have a lot of individually cool artifacts. You want to be an inventor, you want to have that feel. I want to make sure that I'm giving you lots of artifacts with just individual cards go, I'm going to build a deck around that. You know, th this set was meant to be Johnny Rific. This is the, 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 it's a set where I really want to fuel imaginations. I want people to go, ooh, I see that one card, and wow, I have ideas. And that's, so we weren't just making mechanics. We were making an awesome, awesome Aetherpunk set. So there's a lot of cool interactions, a lot of open-ended combos cards uh, in the set. One of the, the more direct uh, representation of this is the cycle of three modules. The three artifacts, uh, animation module, decoction module, and fabrication module, that all have an input that feeds into the next one. So the animation module will take plus one, plus one counters and give you creatures. Well, the decoction module wants creatures to give you energy. And of course, the fabrication module brings it back to the beginning. It wants energy and it gives you plus one, plus one counters. So like, if you remember like, uh, the stations from Mirrodin, that was this like really convoluted four card cycle. We kind of did something in that space. We have these three cards and they do this really powerful thing. Uh, it, once you get all three of them together and gives this really Johnny feel to the set. Combo sort of has this perception that it's like a dirty word among game balance uh, developer type minded people. 
And that's not entirely true. Uh, it means we have to be more careful when we're creating combinations or leaving the possibility that combinations might arise. Um, with Kaladesh, we made a very conscious effort that we would have more combo type cards that have sort of open-ended possibilities and um, uh, give you sort of op op option to do big splashy things if you combine them in the right way. Um, and knowing, going into that uh, intentionally meant that we were putting more effort on those cards, testing them out a lot, testing a lot of combination decks in our future future league. Um, and, you know, generally leaving them there, but making sure that we had a good understanding of how they work and um, hopefully ending up in a good spot where things are exciting, but uh, won't break the game in half. I really like to have each set create a feel that's uniquely its own. Um, and one of the neat things about this set is when you play it, when you're actually in Kaladesh and playing with the cards, that it, it is unlike anything else that it is a set that really has its own very clear identity to it, not just flavorfully, because it has a very flavorful identity, but mechanically. And that one of the things that when you actually get to play with the cards, one of the things that, that to me, like really endears the set to me, is how distinctive it is and how much it has a mechanical feel that is very much all its own. Tezzeret, Tezzeret? He can't get away with this, surely. I guess we'll find out next time when Kaladesh becomes home to an ether revolt. But until we meet again on Inside R&D, for everyone here at Wizards of the Coast, I'm your host Rich Hagen, saying bye.